Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I have a guide video for players who would like to get into competitive Warhammer 40k and learn more about the ITC. I'm sure you've heard me mention the ITC in a lot of my other videos or even heard about it somewhere else online, but you probably don't know everything about it and might even have some misconceptions about it. So in this video, I'm going to go over everything about the ITC, like what it is, what it does for the Warhammer 40k competitive community, how to become a part of it, and how the ITC rankings work. So strap yourself in and let's get started. So let's start with what the ITC is. The ITC was created by the guys over at Frontline Gaming and it stands for Independent Tournament Circuit. It's basically a bunch of independently run tournaments that pool the results together to create a worldwide ranking system for competitive Warhammer 40k players. And within those ITC rankings, there are a bunch of categories players can compete for. And those categories are the circuit champion or best player in the world, the best painter in the world, the best player in your region, the best painter in your region, the best team in the world, the best team in your region, and the best player for each faction worldwide or regional. This is also known as best in faction. I'll break down these rankings and how to achieve them in the third segment of this video, but for now, let's continue on with talking about what the ITC is. The ITC also has its own custom missions that were created by the guys over at Frontline Gaming with the help of tournament officials and top players around the world to help refine them. Those missions were designed to standardize tournaments around the world, since for a long time, every event ran different missions since a lot of TOs had different thoughts on balance, so there wasn't any consistency. For example, back in 5th edition, you could attend 20 different tournaments and all of them would have their own unique missions, which sounds cool and could be fun, but for competitive play, that isn't very consistent. This was because for a very long time, most people often regarded the game's workshop missions as not being that balanced. They were a lot of fun, but there was too much randomness involved in games workshop missions. So most people decided to make their own missions for their tournaments, in hopes to better balance them. So the ITC developed their missions with the help of TOs around the world in hopes to make a mission set that people could agree was good and balanced so it could standardize missions for tournaments. The ITC, however, does not force all ITC tournaments to run these ITC missions because every ITC event is independently run and can use whatever missions they would like. For example, the Nova Open, which is one of the biggest ITC events in the world, runs their own custom missions that were made in a similar way to the missions that the ITC missions were made. From my experience though, the vast majority of ITC tournaments just run the ITC missions since they are well balanced for competitive play and also easily found online. So for the most part, the original goal of having a standardized mission set was achieved. With the recent announcement of 9th edition, a Games Workshop representative said that they had a big emphasis on making the new missions for 9th. So we will have to wait and see if those missions are going to be good enough to be accepted by the competitive community and if those are going to be implemented into tournaments as well, or if we're just going to stick to the ITC missions as the standard missions for tournaments. Either way though, if you do plan on attending an ITC tournament, make sure to look up what missions they will be using so you don't get caught off guard. Because again, any ITC event can use any missions that they wish to. The ITC also has a couple of house rules for Warhammer 40k. Or at least we call them ITC house rules, but that's really a common misconception, and they're actually frontline gaming house rules that they use for their own tournaments and don't force upon anybody else. The most known frontline gaming house rule is that windows and doors on the bottom floor of ruins block line of sight. This was put in place because most terrain in the game has windows and doors you can see through. And with the way 8th edition line of sight worked, there needed to be a fix, so there was actually somewhere to hide your miniatures tactically. But because frontline gaming created the ITC and keeps track of the rankings for the ITC and helped make the ITC missions, the community and tournament officials usually look to them for guidance and tend to implement the FLG house rules for their own events. In fact, I don't think I've ever gone to a tournament that didn't use the the FLG house rules. So more or less, they are basically ITC house rules, but technically they're frontline gaming house rules. So again, just like with the ITC missions, make sure to ask your TO before you attend a tournament what house rules, if any, they're going to use, so you don't get caught off guard when you're playing a game. The ITC also has a code of conduct that it suggests that ITC events enforce. And this was created by the guys from Frontline Gaming with the help of tournament officials around the world, just like the missions. This document is nine pages long and goes over all the do's and don'ts for tournaments and its participants. If these rules are broken by a player, then the ITC has a yellow and red card system kind of like soccer, or football for you Europeans. A yellow card is basically a warning. Multiple yellow cards get you on the shit list for that event, and a red card means you're disqualified from that event. There isn't really a ban list or anything for all ITC events for players who get multiple red cards at multiple different events, since again, ITC tournaments are all independently run, so it would be very difficult to enforce something like that. With that said though, I personally don't think that's a bad thing or really even needed because someone being bad enough to get a red card is extremely rare since most people who attend tournaments just want to have some fun and play some games. So the whole card system is really only there just in case it's needed. 
And that's it for the basics of the ITC. So now let's go into the second segment of this video where I will explain how to become a part of the ITC, either as a participant who is trying to rank up or as a tournament organizer that wants to host an ITC event for your local community. If you want to participate in the ITC as a player, it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is attend an ITC tournament. Make sure though that it's an actual ITC tournament and not just a tournament that's advertising that they're using the ITC missions. Frontline Gaming has a website that lists the majority of all of the ITC tournaments. So if you want a place to start, then I suggest looking at those tournament listings. I'll have a link to that page in the description of this video. Some events use an app called BCP, or Best Coast Pairings, and you might need to make an account on that app in order to participate. But don't worry, it's free to make an account and use the app. And also, some events do things manually, so you might not need a Best Coast Pairings account. If you're going to attend an event, just ask the TO ahead of time if you need the BCP app or not. So then after that, all you got to do is go compete at ITC events, hopefully do well, and hopefully move up in the rankings. I'll talk more about the rankings though in the third part of this video. Let's now go over how to host your own ITC event if you wish to do so. First off though, I feel the need to mention something. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic we are currently in, currently there is no way to host an ITC event. And personally, I wouldn't encourage trying to host a tournament until this pandemic is completely over and done with, which I assume will probably be sometime in late 2020 or even later. But whenever this pandemic is declared as being over and it's safe to form up in groups again, follow these steps to host your own ITC event. The first step is to message Frontline Gaming and get your event approved to be part of the ITC. This can be done manually or through the Best Coast Pairings app. I recommend using the app since it's incredibly convenient for tournament organizers. So hosting an ITC event is actually incredibly simple. And again, like I mentioned in the previous segment of this video, your ITC event can use any missions you choose and any house rules you choose. I recommend just making sure to let the players know ahead of time what route you are taking for transparency. Otherwise, you might anger some players who are expecting different missions and they might not return for your future events. So now let's go into the final segment of this video and let's go over how the ITC rankings work. Because like I mentioned earlier, the ITC is mainly used just to keep track of rankings between all the players throughout the world so that we can see how we stack up against one another. So first off, we need to go over the four different categories of ITC events for this part to make sense. So first we have RTTs or Rogue Trader tournaments. These essentially are your locals. These are one day events that have three or four rounds and usually around eight to 20 participants. But I have seen some RTs end up with 30 participants if it had a good showing. The next type of event is a GT or a grand tournament. These are two day events with five plus rounds, usually three rounds on day one and two plus rounds on day two. And they have 28 to 57 participants. The next type of event is major events, which are two day events with five plus rounds, which again are usually three rounds on day one and two plus rounds on day two, and they have 58 or more players. And the final type of event, which was recently added this year, is super majors. These events are two or three day events with seven plus rounds and 205 or more participants. So now that you know the different types of categories of events, we can get into how the ITC rankings work. So the ITC season is a year long, meaning you have a year to go to events and get your games in and hopefully do well and rank up. The ITC season starts in February of one year and ends in February of the following year. The Las Vegas Open is the closing tournament of the ITC. And for those of you who don't know what that is, the Las Vegas Open is the largest Warhammer event in the world. Last year they had over 800 players signed up. That's actually kind of nuts when you think about it. When it comes to ITC rankings, your overall ITC player score is determined by your 6 best tournament scores added together. I'm not going to get into the full on math behind it because honestly I don't really know how it works, but essentially your score is based on how well you did at that event and the size of that event. So for example, let's say you get 3rd place at an RTT that had 3 rounds and 16 people. You will get X amount of points towards your ITC score. But now let's say you placed 3rd at a GT that had 5 rounds and 50 people then you're gonna get a much higher ITC score for that event than you would have for the previous event because it's much more difficult to get that same placing at a larger event. So like I mentioned earlier, your overall ITC score is determined by your six best tournament scores and you get more points for doing well at larger events. So if your goal is to win one of those categories that I mentioned earlier on in the video, or even just to do well in one of those categories, you're gonna to want to attend as many large events as you can and hopefully do well there. Let's say you attend six events in a year and these were your scores. Now let's say you want to improve your overall score. Well, your option is to replace those lower scores with higher ones. And the best way to do this is to attend a GT, major or super major event and do well there. So let's say you attend the Nova Open and you get 80 points for your placing at that event. That score would then replace the score of RTT number three because you only scored 25 points and it was your lowest score. So now your new scores would look like this. 
So essentially, if you really, really, really want to compete in the ITC rankings, you're going to need to travel and play in as many GT, Major, and Super Major events as possible. And while doing that, you're going to, of course, want to get the best scores possible while doing well. RTTs are nice and all, but to be honest, in the grand scheme of things, they are more or less just practice for the big events, since top players will have a score sheet filled with good placings at GT, Major, and Super Major events, which will give them much higher scores than anybody that's just attending RTTs. This system incentivizes playing at as many large events as possible, since if you happen to have a bad day and you don't do that well, it won't hurt your higher scores from previous events, but if you do attend a new tournament and you do very well at it, it can replace one of your bad scores, until you have your top 6 performances making up your overall ITC score. This system also in a way stops rich people who are mediocre at the game from winning the circuit due to just spamming as many events as they can. Since this stops them from going to every major event possible, doing okay and getting 20 scores that happen to add up and be better than everybody else's scores who could only attend 6 or 7 events that year. So this is why your ITC score only considers your top 6 performances, to try to stop that from happening. And it pretty much guarantees that the best player for that season will actually be crowned as the best player for that season. So now that you understand how the ranking system works, let's go over stuff like best in faction, best painter, and how to win those categories. So for best in faction, you pick a faction you would like to compete for. So for some examples, let's say you want to be the best Blood Angels player in the world, or in your region, or the best Abnek player, or the best Chaos player. So essentially, you just pick whatever army you want to compete with, and you play at events with it. Just like you would if you were trying to be the best player in the world, you gotta attend as many events as you can, and you play your chosen faction at those events and aim to get the best results that you can get. This doesn't mean that you have to get first, second, or third, or really even any high placements at those events. You just need to get the highest score out of all the players in the ITC who are also playing your chosen faction. This is relatively easy for certain factions to do if their army is in a bad state rules-wise or isn't that popular. This is because there will be less people playing that faction, and the top players definitely won't be playing that faction. So you'll have a smaller pool of players to compete with for who is the best player in that faction. On the other side of things, if you're trying to get best in faction for a very popular army, something like Blood Angels, Raven Guard, Ultramarine, stuff like that, those are armies that are good right now, and they are armies that top players might be using. So you're going to have a much larger pool of players that you're competing with for best in faction for that faction. So it's still achievable, especially if you're a good player yourself, but it will be more difficult to do than if you're trying to get best in faction for one of the more unpopular armies or one of the armies that are deemed to be bad in the meta. So the moral of this story is, even if you play something like current Death Guard, which is arguably the worst army in the game right now, you can still compete for something, and in a way, it's much easier to achieve that goal. So competitive can still be fun and give purpose for those who play bad or unpopular factions. And before I finish off this video, let's now quickly go over how to compete for best painter. Well, I believe the ranking system works in a similar way to the ITC scoring system. You go to events, enter your army in the hobby track painting competition, get a score for it that goes towards your painting ranking. I believe it also uses the top 6 scores from events as well, so very similar to the game rankings, only now it's with a brush instead of a dice. So even you hobbyists out there have a reason to go to ITC tournaments and compete. Just make sure to check ahead of time with the TO of the event that you wish to attend, and make sure that they're part of the hobby track. Because again, every ITC tournament is independent and does things their own way. So some events might not be doing the painting scores for the hobby track. With that said, if your event is also doing the hobby track painting scores, you're still going to have to play in the tournament itself. But fear not, you can lose every game in the tournament and still get an amazing score for your hobby track. Since your game score doesn't affect your hobby score, and your hobby score doesn't affect your game score. So yeah, if you're a painter or hobbyist and want a reason to attend more ITC tournaments, this is your reason to. And that's going to be it for my guide on the ITC. Hopefully the information I provided was clear and concise, and hopefully you got the information you wanted from this video. Let me know down in the comments if this video helped you out. I still read every comment on my videos, even though I don't respond to them all, so I'd love to hear what you all have to say. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Warhammer 40k content guides like this. Also, if you wanted to help support the channel even further outside of watching my videos and sharing them with your friends, I'd like to ask that you check me out on Patreon and consider making a pledge. Patreon is the main source of income for the channel, and it's what allows me to make videos like this for the community. For your pledge, I offer many different rewards, stuff like exclusive access to the Almost Pro Gaming Discord server, where you can chat with myself and other patrons about 40k, get list building advice, and look at memes. I also offer coaching and list building services as well if you're interested in that type of service. With that said, thanks to all my current and past patrons. You guys and gals are awesome and I couldn't do this channel without you all, so thank you all very much. And thank you guys for watching this video. I'm glad you made it this far into the video and the YouTube algorithm gods will praise the video for it as well. 
And I guess that's about it. So thanks again for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Happy Wargaming.